Welcome to this presentation. My name is Ricarda Busse and I will give you some insights into this Traptech technology. At the very beginning, I'm curious to hear if you have already some experiences using the Traptech system. Therefore, I would like to start a quick poll to get an overview on your stage of knowledge. And while you have some time to answer the poll, I will give you an overview already on the content of the webinar today. So in the first half of the talk today, I would like to um, give you some insights into the development of the StrapTech technology. And in the second part, I will focus more on the benefits of the StrapTech technology. Hey, Wolf, can you show us the result? Oh, that looks pretty good. 69% of you have already worked with the StrapTech before and only 31% are new to the system. So I hope that every one of you will learn some more details about the system today. And now I would like to start. Let's have a look on the Streptavidin biotin interaction, with it, which is the basis of the Streptex system. Streptavidin became famous for its nearly irreversible binding to biotin. It's one of the strongest non-covalent interactions in nature. And it is used for immobilization and sensitive detection purposes. Further, streptavidin is highly stable protein against, for example, proteases, against extreme pH. It has a very low tendency to end specific binding and has a high intrinsic avidity due to its tetrameric presence. All this together made the system particularly attractive for engineering an affinity purification system. In a first step, the streptech peptide was selected from a random peptide library as a peptide binding to the biotin binding site of streptavidin. The advantage was that the peptide uh, could be released from streptavidin in a competitive manner. But the drawback was that it could be used only at the C-terminus of a recombinant protein. So the peptide was systematically optimized and named streptec 2 Streptec 2 is an 8 amino acids long peptide and now can be used for at the N or C-terminus of a recombinant protein. But it is not binding to streptavidin with the same binding affinity as the streptec-1. Therefore, the streptactin was engineered with an altered biotin binding site to improve the binding affinity for streptec-2. This system was used for 15 years successfully for protein purification, detection and assays. But it has some weaknesses like capture of proteins or other high affinity applications such as low abundant proteins, batch purification or assay applications. Therefore, the system needed further improvement. To understand this, we will have a look now at the binding kinetics of the system. Here you see a Bayer-Core measurement of streptec 2 fused to bacterial alkaline phosphatase. And what you see in the sensorgram is that the interaction has a quite fast on rate. The on rate is shown here. This is the stage where the protein binds to the streptactin resin via its streptec 2. So it would be hard to improve the on rate because it is already quite fast. Another idea was to lower the off rate where the protein is released from the streptactin. But lowering the off rate would also mean that it hampers the illusion in a competitive manner. Due to the tetrameric nature of the streptactin, another idea was to make use of an avidity effect. For this, two streptec 2 sequences were linked with each other. The transient release of a single site doesn't allow the protein to fuse away, so binding will reinstate it on the streptactin. And the equilibrium of this interaction is shifted to this conformation here. The avidity effect improves the off rate but without tempering the illusion in, in the competitive manner by addition of destiobiotin or biotin. The molecule with two streptec 2s in series is called a twin streptec. It has an increased binding affinity to streptactin, but this is still not sufficient enough to capture, for example, membrane proteins in a broad range or to do assay development. Therefore, more effort was put to increase the binding affinity between twin streptec and streptactin resulting in streptactin XT. In combination with the twin streptec, it has a near covalent binding affinity which allows sufficient ca capture of a broad range of protein classes, low abundant proteins and assay applications. 
In the next slide, I have an overview for you on the StrapTech core de technology. The first generation was the StrapTech 1 in combination with the StrapTavidin. The second uh, generation consisted of, consists of the StrapTech 2 with StrapTactin. And the third generation is now Twin StrapTech with StrapTactin XT. To get an overview on the different binding affinities which are important to understand the system, I have prepared another overview for you. What you see here are the binding affinities of the different components. For example, biotin binds in a femtomolar binding affinity range towards streptavidin. Since the biotin binding pocket of streptactin was modified, the binding affinity towards biotin is decreased. And this is even decreased in streptactin XT where the biotin binding site is further mutated. When we have a look on streptac 2, it has a near micromolar um, binding affinity towards streptavidin. And this uh, binding affinity is increased towards streptactin and it is already in the nanomolar range in combination with streptactin XT. Similar to this is the binding affinity to the twin strap tag. It is increased from streptavidin to streptactin and further increased to a near picomolar um, binding affinity uh, for streptactin XT. And this comes already to the range of the biotin to a streptavidin binding affinity. The so far shown uh, advantages of the sim, uh, system made the system one of the most widely used affinity chromatography systems in protein purification and detection. Further its benefits are, it's very easy and rapid one-step purification under physiological buffer conditions. It's um, unsurpassed protein purity and bioactivity. It tolerates a broad range of detergents, chelators, salt and redox conditions. It is beneficial for a range of protein classes like metalloproteins. For example, metalloproteins cannot be purified via the His tag because the nickel NTA which is used for the histec purification does also interact with the metal uh, center of the metalloproteins. It is also beneficial for membrane proteins, for bioactive proteins because the uh, used physiological buffer conditions uh, preserve the bioactivity of those proteins and also the protein-protein interaction analysis um, um, benefits from the physiological buffer conditions because those conditions do not interrupt the protein-protein interactions. And it is a, a evaluated expression system in different hosts, for example in bacteria, mammalia, yeast, plant and insect cells. The before mentioned high purity results actually from two specificity conferring steps. The first step is the specific binding of the twin streptec or streptec 2 towards streptactin or streptactin XT, which is demonstrated here. And similar to streptavidin, streptactin and streptactin XT have a very low um, non-specific binding properties towards um, yeah, unspecific proteins. The second uh, specificity conferring step are the overall buffer conditions which remain unchanged um, during the whole purification procedure. Due to the simple um, addition of biotin to the buffer, the proteins uh, get um, eluted from the resin by addition of biotin or destiobiotin. And proteins, for example, this uh, protein number six, which um, unspecifically binds to the matrix, for example, with the superflow matrix, they will not be eluted during the elution conditions and it will stay on the matrix. Now let's have a look on this very um, easy and simple purification cycle of streptactin XT. The first step would be to apply your lysate on the column and the specific binding occurs. Um, while you use uh, physiological buffer conditions, uh, all the non-specific host proteins will be washed down from the column. The third step is a competitive elution, which is done by the simple addition of biotin to, to the buffer. And here the target protein is simply eluted. And finally, the resin can be regenerated by the addition of low concentrated sodium hydroxide and then the resin can be reused at least three to five times, but some people use it even up to 10 or 20 times. In the next slide, I would like to compare the two purification cycles from streptactin and streptactin XT. In the first step, you apply the lysate for both and the specific binding occurs. Also, the physiological washing conditions are um, the same for both proteins. The competitive illusion on streptactin 
is done by the addition of destiobiotin. On the other hand, the um, competitive illusion from streptactin XD is done by addition of biotin. On streptactin XD, the illusion cannot be done with destiobiotin because its binding affinity towards the streptactin XT is too low to compete with the streptac 2 or twin streptac for the biotin binding site. So it is very important if you use um, streptactin XT that you use biotin for the competitive illusion. The regeneration on streptactin um, can be done with uh, HABA. HABA is a yellowish solution which is applied onto the column and when it binds to streptactin it changes its color from yellow to red and thereby releases destiobiotin from the resin. This color change also serves as kind of a quality control. And as long as the uh, harbor turns uh, into red on the column, you can still um, reuse your column. The regeneration on streptactin XT is done with low concentrations of sodium hydroxide. Here you can also use harbor as kind of a quality control, but harbor will not lead to the uh, regeneration of the streptactin XT resin. And with this, I'm already at the end of my presentation. And um, yeah, feel free for any questions or technical help to contact our technical support. I have one last question to the audience. This is, which tech are you generally using in your lab for protein purification? So, nearly 50% use the HisTech versus 43% which use the StrapTech system as a default purification system, which looks pretty good that already 43% are using the system. And there are a few more using the GST tech or other techs. Maybe we hear us again.